Hello, everybody. Is Antonio off to the MLS? Who knows? Are we going to sign another Croatian player? And what about the new rules in terms of the Premier League this year? It's all coming up in Hammers Headlines. Russ and the West Ham Network. Hope you are all safe and well. Happy Thursday on the road to the weekend. And our final friendly <laughs> before we play Bournemouth next week, uh, playing by Leverkusen, Tim Steiden's old club. Um, today, you've had a few cut shows already. In the morning, I did one about JVP because he's on the forefront of most people's thoughts at the moment, unfortunately. Or fortunately, depends how you look at it. And then at uh, lunchtime today, I did our probably our biggest rumour roundup. I think this this transfer window. I think some of like eighteen players we've got, which is ridiculous. And um, because of that, a few new names we've, we've we've pushed on. We've beaten last season's record. I think one hundred last year was about one hundred and thirty. I think we're about one hundred and thirty three now. So, congratulations, everybody! Those journalists, those agents, you've done a great job this year. Um, but anyway, one out, one in. And one rule change. That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's talk about the one out. Let's talk about Mikel Antonio, as we said at the beginning. Um, now, there's, I think he's been heavily linked with an exit away from London Stadium. There was a report recently that actually he's going to stay. But um, I think this has superseded that report. Um, obviously, he was due to, he was heavily linked with a move to the Saudi League, El Fatica, in terms of Stephen Gerrard's side. Although I think they ended up getting Moussa Dembele on loan. You remember the winker. Um, so good luck to them. Um, but according to the mirror, he Antonio is attracting interest from the from MLS in terms of the summer transfer window. Um, that's according to the mirror's uh, Darren Lewis. He, I mean, Antonio is about he's 33, he's on 100 and 100k a week. Um, he's I think he's the fifth highest earner at London Stadium behind Paqueta, Ings, Ariola, and Zuma. Um, so you know, getting him off the wage bill might be a good thing. Um, he's 33, so you know, old father time waits for no man in terms of him, and obviously, his pace and power will get reduced as as the years. As he is stack up, he's 33 now, so maybe he's got another two years, maybe at the top flight, potentially, or, or a reasonably high level. Um, I mean, you know, with, with the, the whole thing around Skamaka, um, I mean, I just think Antonio's probably best moved on. I, I mean, I, again, he's you know, our Premier League top goal scorer, but I just feel that you know, by him still being there, we, we still have to play his dimensional way. Um, he might never change. He might have a change. He says we might get someone in who's a younger version. We spoke about a couple of people at lunchtime today, but um, it does seem there's a lot of interest from the MLS. I think it'd be an ideal move for him, to be honest. You see Messi's over there now and Busquets and, you know, Suarez looks like he's going over to into uh, Miami as well. I think it'd be a great, great move for him to sort of the twilight years. Let's also talk of Everton, maybe being interested in him as well. Um, and, you know, even potentially some of the Saudi clubs could be sniffing around for him. You know, he's still got, you know, uh, a draw. You know, he's, he's, he's West Ham's Premier League all-time go goal scorer. Um, and you know, he's an imposing character. He's physically big. He's still, you know, he can still got a turn of pace. Um, but maybe the Premier League is maybe more slightly more too intense for him for a whole season. I don't know. I don't know. But as I said, it could be he's off to America. It could be. Um, let's talk about, let's talk about the one in then. Let's talk about one being, obviously we went through a load today already. Um, but uh, apparently, obviously we know that uh, Vlasic's move to Torino looks like it's almost getting there around 10 million pounds, eight to 10 million pounds. Apparently is what we're going to, they're going to be paying for him. But could we be signing another Croatian? Uh, Dinamo Zagreb uh, defender Josip Sutalo uh, is being chased by West Ham with us amongst several clubs, including Arsenal, keen on the player. The six foot three defender featured in 36 games for Zagreb last season, six of which came in the Champions League and has much interest with the likes of Arsenal, as I said, as well as Napoli, um, Fiorentina, Leipzig. Um, all in the hunt, apparently, according to the Italian media outlet, Tuto Mercato. Um, 
he's an imposing character. You know, he's he's, he's a very strong defender. Um, but the issue is at the moment, Zagreb are in the middle of a Champions League qualifying sort of uh, session at the moment. And they're probably unwilling to part with him when they have such key games to tackle. Um, maybe after that, they could then maybe look at selling him. But at the moment, they've got a few uh, important games in terms of qualifying for the Champions League. So that's why they're reluctant maybe to sell him. And obviously, all the issues we've had with with Vlasic, do you think he's going to... I mean, he's, he's a crazy test. Do you reckon he's been on the phone to, to your ship and said, Dad, I don't fancy this lot? Who knows? But we've been linked to him, so that's why we report it. And finally, there's um, obviously we are uh, just over a week away, 10 days or so away from the beginning of the Premier League. Actually, it's Friday, less than just over a week. Um, and there's a number of rule changes that are coming into play. Um, so we thought we'd just quickly go through them because it's quite interesting. Um, so you're not sort of surprised come the Bournemouth game. Um, and uh, they're mainly around sort of dissent and also the added time. Um, now, you know, no doubt this season we're going to be singing the fact that we are champions of Europe. That's what we are. And by the sounds of it, we're going to have a lot more time to do that in games. Um, in, ter- you know, in terms of the time wasting and things like that, that's the biggest crackdown and ball in play time. Um, we've seen it in the World Cup as well, where games were, were quite commonly over for 100 minutes. And I think that's the case you've got to get in terms of the Premier League now. Um, added on time at the end of the Premier League is now expected to frequently run into double digits. Um, indeed, one official told Sky Sports that it'll be a rarity to see a top flight game last less than 100 minutes. Um, it comes as statistics show that basically the ball has been in play on average in professional games in England around 55 minutes in top flight, which is ridiculous considering we're playing how much money we're paying for it. And also more time will be added on to goal celebrations, which officials feel are becoming more lengthy and more elaborate. Uh, They're obliged to specify time, how long the game is stopped before the restart of game interruptions, such as goals, substitutions, injuries, and preparations for things like penalties and free kicks, which again, take a lot of time. Um, So they're going to be a bit more robust. And it means that there's going to be a lot more, time added on also they're going to be more um more clear and more stringent in terms of um wasting time as well because that will automatically be added on to this um to this sort of um double figures extra time we're going to be getting all the, all the time um there's also going to be a higher threshold will be which is going to be applied to contact between players meaning there should be fewer free kicks uh, awarded for incidents which last year might have got a free kick and this year and so this year slightly more sort of physical so that's going to be interesting to see things that were given for a free kick last year potentially aren't going to be given this year so that's going to be quite interesting to see the difference um and also we're going to have to be the players are going to be well, more well behaved with their um with the conduct towards referees um because you know basically the idea is not one whenever more than one player of a team approaches the referee um at least one of those players and potentially more will automatically get a yellow card so the idea is the captain also we don't know who the captain is so more is better get his finger out but in theory when there's a so you won't hopefully get a a mat what i call a man united horde around a referee anymore and if you do at least one of them's gonna get booked so there we go um so yeah, so you know, practically any player that runs from a distance to approach the match officials, and that includes the linesman as well, will be booked. So that's good. I mean, you look at how rugby is, you know, the, the respect for the referee um is is clear. And you know, the captain talks to the referee and that's it. And that's something which I think we've needed to get done a lot. I hate the fact that referees get hounded by players and you know, all that type of thing. It's the captain, it's one player goes up to them anymore it's automatic yellow card other things that are being taken into place in terms of there's going to be a new technical code area code of conduct um so there'll only literally be one person who can go in be touchline basically and so that's gonna be interesting actually it won't be now because paul nevin's not there no more and he's the one who used to stand up next to him always but anyway um there's gonna be increased financial penalties for repeat offenders in terms of breaching technical areas and um, they're also going to be stadium bans and uh potential criminal prosecution for tragedy abuse. So when fans, things like the the air crash um, and other incidents, historic incidents, and there's sort of abuse by the fans, it's, it'd be increased, um, what's the correct, increased um, 
punishment that'll do um for if uh, repeat offenders and a pilot scheme also to rehabilitate young offenders to educate them about their impact on others as well um and also academy scholars are going to be undertaking referee courses to improve their education into officiating so there's lots of new things going to be coming into play but i think the main thing is matches is going to be a lot longer next season and hopefully they won't be well the main takeaways are match is going to be longer hopefully there'll be less free kicks because it'll be a bit more physical which is something which i think we've all seen football's become a bit non-contact that's not the point of football it has to be you know battles and stuff like that and as long as it's not you know goes goes over the line then i think it's fair enough and thirdly is hopefully you'll see less uh, officiating hoarding of players um it'd be one player usually the captain who will go up to the official anymore and potentially well it should be an automatic yellow card for at least one of them group if not all of them so that'd be quite interesting uh, and that's it my friends uh, as i said go back and check out our rumors show that we did this morning um this afternoon rather and all that good stuff any breaking news it could be a busy weekend could be a busy weekend for west ham so uh, any breaking news we'll try and get to you as soon as possible so take care stay safe stay warm stay humble my friends keep the faith come on you bloody beautiful irons and we'll see you guys very very soon ta-ta for now <laughs>